Hey everybody, this is Sayananda with Latitude 64. I'm here today at Rocky Ridge, a really cool private course out here. Uh, we just got finished with a really fun dubs tournament that I happened to take down with my partner. Um, they just held a really cool uh, tournament here for charity, uh, Birdies for Boobies, if you've heard of it. It was, a, it was their inaugural tournament and it went off without a hitch. Um, so super cool course if you're ever in the area, definitely hit me up. Um, I'm here today with my little easy go bag and I'm going to give you a little bit of an in the bag from what I was throwing in 2018 and uh, be sure to take a look or keep an eye out for 2019 in the bag sometime around the Las Vegas challenge-ish. Um, I'll start with my high speed drivers today. I've got two Belistas in the bag. This one is a little bit older. This is a Snowline Belista that I stole, kinda stole, um, from Feldberg from his private collection and it was so nice. I'm actually gonna trade somebody else for two more. Great flight, I absolutely love it. My max distance driver, this one is really cool. I have some awesome signatures on it from not only some epic golfers, but some really good friends. So I got a lot of good vibes in this disc. Um, next I have, I loved that Ballista so much, I had to pick up more. So I picked up this really cool Team Stamp Ballista and it has a really, really great feel. Very similar, but it's just like a touch more overstable. Um, but I like it in any kind of wind conditions or if I want to get really aggressive and throw it a little bit harder It holds true and it always has a really nice little t turn right in the middle of the flight um, So that's it for my high-speed long-distance drivers um, I usually take it down a little bit a notch with a trespass This is one of the first trespasses I ever got from Latitude when they sponsored me and it has stayed in the bag consistently for two years now and just a testament to the plastic, it hasn't broken in very much. I'd say it's a little bit more understable than when I first got it for sure, but the flight characteristics have really stayed true. Um, I really love it in the Fusion plastic. I think I have a few in BioFusion that I use for field work, just a touch more understable. Um, but for some reason this color as well just has a really nice feel to it with the plastic and I like that a lot. Um, and then when I'm stepping down in distance from there, grab all my fairways here. So I'll start here. This is a striker. I got at the same time that I got the trespass. So it's a really similar plastic and it stayed in the bag consistently as well. Um, it was a really good run. I'm not sure which of. This one is max weight. Um, it's a really great fairway disc, but it's got a little bit extra. It's a high speed fairway, maybe. Um, I really like this one just for dead straight shots or if I need a mild turnover, I know it's going to come back for me. I'll even throw this one on huge like spike Anheuser's and it'll pop out just a little bit for me. Um, very stable disc, not really overstable, not really understable. It usually just kind of holds the line you put it on. I always keep this one in the bag just because it's maneuverable and it's you don't have to put a ton of speed on it. It's a nice controlled finesse disc. Um, and then from there, I've got two pretty understable discs in my bag. I always like to keep a few just in case there's like some tailwind or in case there's a particular shot where I need to know that it's not going to pull out and or hyzer at the end. Um, I've got an old beat-in Saint that uh, I think I actually got around the same time as the Trespass and the Striker as well. Um, my dad put some really cool artwork on there, a nice little shark. Um, this one has, has retained its shape really well. It has a really, really nice uh, mold to it. I like the dome on the top. It keeps it from getting too understable, even though it's a pretty low speed disc. I like to use these for my Anheuser control Anheuser shots where I want to put a good amount of power on it, but not so much power that it's going to turn into a roller or cut roll or do anything funky on some weird angles or anything like that. Um, I just put this one in somewhat recently 
it's been kind of swished around from a few other people and I've recently been looking for uh, different molds lately. I think I tried a mall uh, for a similar flight characteristics and that's a really good one, but this one was just beat in and a little bit more reliable is why I went with it. Um, and then even more understable than that, I have a Fury. This one is a really cool limited edition gold line. I have a few other Furies. I really like to give them away to um, like newer beginning players. My mom has a few f Furies. She can throw the heck out of them. Um, this one is really cool. Similar to the Saint a little bit, but this I would say has a little bit more of an S flight to it. It also has a lot more um, high speed turnover. So I can muscle that Saint a little bit more. This I, requires more finesse, a little bit more spin with it to get the same angles. Uh, this one is really fun. I enjoy throwing it with a uh, sidearm as well. My sidearm is just now kind of coming along, but I can usually get a good 250 out of it with this guy with um, pretty solid ease. Um, and I think that's it for the understable. And then I, as well as keeping a few understable discs in my bag, I always like to keep a few overstable discs in my bag just to keep as good tools and good utility. Uh, the more understable of the two would be my Long Bowman. This one is really cool as well. I really like it um, because you can you can put a lot of power and you can put a lot of speed on it, but the flight characteristics stay relatively the same. Um, and the only thing that's going to change about it is it's going to have more glide, and then it has the same amount of fade at the end. So depending on the power you put on it, you're going to get a pretty solid uh, distance reference. Um, and I also like to throw this one sidearm as well. It's a 168, so it's pretty maneuverable. I would say if you threw it in higher uh, higher weight. It's, it's going to be pretty overstable, but that might be beneficial for someone with a higher arm speed. This one is just right for me, though. Nice and lightweight, and I like uh, playing with lightweight discs that are overstable. You'll see a few more in my bag. Um, and then if I want to step it up even more from there, I have this awesome... Um, I just heard the story. This was actually a $5 disc that somebody randomly picked up, and it is the most priceless triple X I have ever thrown. It's a 169 and it throws like a triple X, but you don't have to throw it very, very hard. So with my arm speed, I mean, I throw with a good amount of muscle, but I wouldn't say I have like the gnarliest arm speed out there. And I can get this on a pretty solid Anheuser and it always flexes back, but because of the light weight, it's really, really manageable. Just in case you fluff it or in case you don't want to put max power on it, you're still going to get some really consistent flight characteristics. So thank you, Stu Autry, for giving me this awesome disc. It's been in the bag ever since he gave it to me, and I don't really foresee it coming out of the bag unless something cool and overstable comes my way. And isn't it beautiful? Gorgeous. Okay, so then we can move to my mid-ranges. Um, I've got uh, the Warship for a good transition. This was a fairway mid-range, a tweener disc I like to call. Because it looks like a mid-range, but you can throw it pretty well like a fairway and you'll get, I'd say it's a little bit more um, controllable than a fairway because of the lower speed and the more blunt of a rim. This one is really cool. I, I probably throw it off the tee more than I throw it as like a mid-range or anything like that. Occasionally I'll throw it sidearm. I can see how it would be a really good sidearm disc, but it just doesn't quite um, fit my sidearm at the moment. Uh, this one also has some really cool artwork that my dad has done. And I also have a few signatures on here, Jumbo Slice and Danny Peterson with Flex Disc Golf. Uh, this one is really cool. I just like, I honestly just love throwing it off of the tee because it usually goes so dead straight, but unlike throwing a mid of a similar rim thickness, it always has a really reliable hyzer at the end. And I like it too. I guess I've um, said it about a few other discs, but I like it because you can really like put power into it. You can really muscle it and know that it's going to have a nice consistent flight to it. So you don't have to worry about touching it or putting too much finesse on it. Of course, some, but this one you can really unload on. 
Uh, and then I've got a nice compass here. I think this is a great disc, um, a great staple for just about any bag. It's a really maneuverable mid-range. It's nice and stable, so you can throw it on a good Anheuser sidearm or backhand, and it'll usually hold that Anheuser pretty well if you get the correct amount of power on it. I mean, I've seen Ricky throw it and he does crazy things with it. So the things I do with it aren't quite as cool, but I still, I still love the flight characteristics. Or even if, you, uh, if you're at a standstill and you need something that's gonna get a little bit of extra glide, but not too understable, I really like this one for those longer fairway mids. Um, yeah, and I got this one signed um, by Ricky West Saki. Got a cool autograph, he signed it upside down which is kind of cool. Um, and then from there, I've got a Bard. This is probably the second most overstable discs in my bag, or uh, mid-range in my bag. I just kind of randomly picked this one up out of the pile of discs that I have because I was in search of a certain flight, but I didn't know what kind of disc I wanted. I just knew I wanted something stable, reliable, with a decent amount of glide that I didn't have to muscle too much. Um, and so this kind of found its way to me. Very, very similar in um, shape and in mold as the Warship, but this has a bead at the bottom which I think gives it just a little bit more stability and um, a little bit more reliability in the wind and just it's a little bit more blunt and it cuts through a little bit slower. This one's 174, so this is kind of my like, just, just grit it and throw it hard kind of disc. If you just need a hyzer shot, you can launch this guy and it'll always, it'll always um, stay true to the flight, always stay hyzered. I've never thrown it and gone, oh crud, I accidentally flipped it over, I didn't want to do that. So it's been really, really consistent. This one is really weird though, um, because I had a towel that I was drying it off with in the rain, and the color leaks for some reason on the plastic. I've only seen a handful that do it, but I can rub a towel on it and I'll get red mark on it. I don't know what that is, so if you have any info, maybe let me know. Um, and shoot me a message if you know what that's all about. And then, last but not least for my mid-ranges, I have a pretty beat-in mace. This is the Zero Hard, and I absolutely love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really foresee myself taking this out of bag at any point. I like it off the tee, but as a mid-range, it just goes dead straight, like, I don't know, it just has a, it has a really blunt edge to it, so it's nice and slow. So you can give a nice clean full release and it's still gonna give you a nice mid-range distance. It's not gonna keep flying if you give it too much power. And I can always rely on this to hold the most beautiful like flex shots or turnover shots, or I can even hold it on a really, really pretty Anheuser. That probably looks like a hyzer from your perspective, but you know what I mean. Uh, this one is pretty old, and it seems like the plastic I usually get from Trilogy beats in really, really well. I never, uh, I never really break discs, so to speak, to a point where they're so understable that you can't throw them anymore. And this one is pretty old, and the flight characteristics have stayed pretty, um, pretty consistent throughout the years. I have a few more for field practice and stuff like that. It's a good. Um, it's a good neutral disc, so it'll show you where the release of your angle is. So if you come at it with a little bit of Anheuser, it's gonna stay on that Anheuser and you know how you release the disc. Um, it's fun for like, um, I think Paige calls them push hyzers, where it's a little bit nose up, but it just goes straight while staying like on hyzer angle. That one's super duper fun, just maneuverable. And I can throw this one a sidearm as well. Although my sidearm can get a little bit wonky, so if your sidearm is inconsistent, this would be a good disc to maybe hone in that touch. Oh, maybe I should play around with this, that would be fun. Um, and then I'll go, oh yeah, 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 one more mid-range. Um, I always keep a Justice in the bag. Um, this one is a cool local player, uh, Logan McLaughlin signed this one for me. I always like to have friends sign my discs just for inspiration. Um, and then this pretty little Lotus stamp is a stamp a friend got for me as well. And there's a little sigh in there. Um, I think it's really cool. 
This one is a 168, so another really overstable disc, but in a lighter weight. I think it makes it much more manageable. Even in the wind, I don't seem to have any troubles with this, just even though it's a lighter disc. Um, and this is just this is just a great disc to have for utility shots. I play in the woods a lot, so sometimes you're in a position where you need a really tight hyzer shot or something that's going to go up in the air and always make its way down. And I can't throw this one very far. Um, I always like to throw it on a big manual Anheuser to watch it flex over. That's a new shot that I've gotten uh, in the bag recently that's really fun to play with. And I think that's it for mid-ranges. So we'll move into my throwing putters now. Um, we'll go over stable first. Um, this is a really, really cool um, hand-eye mold harp. I've got this one in the Erigio plastic, and this was another really cool disc uh, that was gifted to me by Stephen William. Um, I have had it in the bag ever since, and uh, he gave it to me just for liking me as a player, and the only exception is he said I gotta do cool stuff with it, and I gotta win something with it. So, I think I've won a few things with it. And it definitely hasn't hindered me, so thank you for this awesome putter. It's also beautiful, and if it weren't for this huge hand-eye stamp, I think I would have lost this disc probably like six months ago. At least there were like three occasions where it was dusk, and if this pretty rainbow weren't on it, it, were gonna, it was gone for sure. So it's a really cool, unique disc, I think, and I really like, um, I like the Origio. Sometimes the Origio can be kind of gummy, but this run is really nice and firm. And, and I mean, I never would have guessed that was a, it was a Origio. It just feels like the uh, feels like just the regular hard plastic to me. But this is a um, similar utility disc I'll use for backhand and for sidearm. Um, it has a really nice amount of glide to it, depending on the power you put on it low power it's going to hold a hyzer and then put a little bit more on it it's going to glide a little bit more and, and and you know so on so it has the same amount of hyzer it just depends on what kind of power you want to put on it depending on how close you want it to land for you um and then this one is a warden i have it in prime i picked this one up um at the distribution or not at the distribution center but the uh manufacturing plant down in emporia that was, that was fun. I spent a lot of money down there, but it was so worth it. <laughs> but this one is uh, the Burst Prime, and I think it's so fun to throw. I love throwing all of my putters, except for my main putter off of the tee. I think it's a great shot to utilize when you need controlled straight shots, or you need to control the distance, or if you want to get a nice Anheuser out there. This one is really maneuverable for me. It's... Um, it's a good utility putter in my opinion because it's not so understable that you're worried when you throw it on a hyzer or when you're worried when you throw it straight. It usually just holds dead on the line that you put it on. It's a characteristic I really like in my disc flights. Um, just It shows you where your errors are. If I throw it and I shank it over and it rolls and cuts, I know it's because my release was weird, not because of the disc I chose and not because of the mold. Um, yeah, so I throw this all the time. I think I even took CTP today with this guy. And um, then I've got my deputy, always, always in my bag. I like these ones. Um, I like these ones fairly beat in, in all honesty. They're a pretty understable disc, but I like them after a few throws. Um, so I'll take used ones. These are one of the only putters that I like to cycle through. These ones can get a little bit dead. These ones can get understable to the point where you may need to put that one away and try cycling in a few new ones. So I always have some that I do field work with. I have some that I give to friends. Um, but this is also just a wonderful disc to have in the bag for standstills, for jump putts, even for like layups that you know that it's just going to go straight and slide right under the basket without any kind of hyzer weird dinky stuff going on. I also love to throw this one on like uh, big sky Anheusers. I'll just toss it up in the air on a pretty subtle Anheuser line and watch it float all the way down. Just a fun disc to throw, and it has never failed me in tournament, and that's usually when I keep a disc in the bag. If it falters in tournament, then you just can't trust it, and this guy has always been in my bag. Um, 
And then my main putting putter is a Warden. Uh, I love it in the classic plastic. It's nice and tacky, but it also has a really good rigidity to it. Um, it's a really, I don't know, at least for me personally, it seems like a really true flight disc. It goes nice and straight with a little bit of hyzer at the end, so you can always count on it having that really nice amount of glide and that it always has a very reliable hyzer at the end. I don't particularly like to swing to the right of the basket and air ball. I would rather my disc come hyzer in, at least tink the basket or at least make its way towards that direction. So I really appreciate it. I used to throw the judge, um, which people say is like a, like a beaded warden, but I eh, kind of, I think the, uh, I think the mold is pretty different, and I think the flight characteristics are different. Characteristics are different, but I could have gotten weird plastic, or I could have gotten a strange run. Um, but definitely Team Warden faux show. This one's really cool. It had a really pretty double stamp on it. I got this one down in Emporia as well. It had a rainbow stamp with a black stamp on top of it. It's pretty faded right now, but it was really cool in its prime. And then I got this guy here. I don't usually throw it in tournament very much, but it's probably one of the funnest discs I have ever thrown, the Beetle. It only comes, I think max is like probably gonna be 149, but I've only seen 144s and 145s. Um, I know they're coming out with a new run soon. This is the first run spill top I've had for ages, and I've got a bunch when I first got them. It's the funnest disc to throw for new players, ultimate players, experienced players love throwing it. Like, it's just the most versatile disc that can appeal to anyone that may want to play disc golf. I love, you can stand like 250 feet apart and float this to somebody and you can play catch from like across a football field or a soccer field. And it's really easy to catch as well. It has um, the same mold as an ultimate disc, but it has the same circumference as like a disc golf disc. So it goes really, really far. I think it's a six glide, which is preposterous in my opinion. Um, so if you haven't checked one out, definitely um, go, out, go, out that, go out there and grab one. Um, I also wanted to plug real quick. I, um, with my boyfriend and I, are gonna host a cool little, I think it's gonna be unsanctioned. We're gonna host a beetle only tournament down here. Um, in Idaho. Uh, we're getting uh, getting everything in the works to get approval to play down at a local course, Corbin. The date should be March 23rd. Um, if it's not that exact date, it's gonna be somewhere around then. So it, I don't think it's gonna be on a conflicting weekend for any other big tournaments and stuff like that. So if you feel like that's gonna be a good time, spread the word and definitely make it down. I would love to see you and I would love to see how people throw the beetle. It's so much fun. Um, let's see. And I think uh, you always wanna keep your water, you always wanna keep your pencils. Don't forget your pencils, Sharpies. I think that's everything. Keep an eye out in 2019. Shoot.